What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video, I want to look at the behavior of inductors in DC circuits. And it's very important to understand these very fundamental uh, kind of understanding of inductors uh, in DC circuits before we get into how inductors behave in AC circuits, and it'll play a major role uh, into uh, AC circuit analysis and also circuit design and kind of giving us an intuitive understanding as to how these components will behave in a circuit and how they will influence a circuit. So to start, I'm going to start with a simple circuit, a uh, very simple circuit, just a battery here, and I'll draw a little switch there. And there's our inductor. And so there's our battery. Complete that switch. Okay, so uh, when the switch is open, obviously it's pretty obvious that no current is flowing, right? No current can flow through this. And um, basically, what happens, what I want to really analyze here is when, when we close the switch, what happens? And your mind kind of tells you, because if you know what an, an inductor actually looks like, right? I have an inductor right here. Let me show you guys. An inductor is just really a coil of wire, right? It's just, all it is is a coil of wire. It can be just a coil of wire in the air, or it can be a coil of wire around some core like this. And um, you really, your intuitive sense says, well, it's just a piece of wire, right? So it's going to act just like this. And so what you would think is as soon as the switch is closed, uh, current will just start to flow through this circuit, right? And uh, that is not the case. So let me explain. I'm going to try and explain this. It's a little bit more difficult than the capacitor to explain because I actually have to really explain how an inductor works uh, briefly, not in too much detail, but I want to explain what's going on here, how this inductor works, and why no current flows as soon as the switch is closed. Um, so let's go ahead and look at it. As soon as the switch is closed, you would, this end of the inductor would have a more positive voltage, and this end would have a more negative voltage, right, relative to each other. And so let's take a closer look at this inductor. Let me draw this, this inductor right here in more detail. And so this side is at a more positive potential, and this side is at a more negative potential, right? And so uh, I don't really want to get into too much details about this because I will make another video about exactly how inductors work, but I don't want to do all that right here because I just want to explain how they behave in circuits. But essentially, we could use the right-hand rule, and that's just going to tell us, okay, current, conventional current would flow from positive to negative through this inductor, right? So if I point my thumb in the direction of the current, my fingers, I curl my fingers, that will show me what direction my, my thumb shows the direction of the current, my fingers will show me what direction the magnetic field points. And so there's going to be a magnetic field uh, that's going to point uh, to the left, right? So there's going to be a magnetic field pointing to the left due to the actual current flowing, uh, due to the actual potential difference from this inductor. But uh, if you know anything about uh, Lenz's law or anything like that, you'll know that um, this inductor is really going to try and um, it's going to try and maintain the actual flux, the magnetic flux in this inductor. Originally, the magnetic flux in this inductor was zero, right? Because there was no current flowing through here, so the magnetic flux through this inductor was zero. All of a sudden, you put a current through this inductor, and it has a magnetic field pointing this direction. So what this inductor is actually going to do is it's going to try and maintain the flux in this inductor. So it's going to actually produce its own. It's going to have its own induced magnetic field, which is going to point the exact opposite direction. So... You basically, you apply a voltage th through this inductor, um, and what happens is it creates a magnetic field. This uh, magnetic field is going to be opposed by an induced magnetic field. This induced magnetic field is going to actually produce another voltage within the inductor, which is going to oppose. This inductor is going to produce its own um, voltage across it, which is going to oppose the actual voltage that was originally across it, which basically cancels it out and makes it so that no current can flow through this inductor. Okay, so there's a lot going on there. I'll explain it one more time just so you guys understand it. This is the actual original uh, potential difference or voltage applied across this inductor. We use the right-hand rule that tells us that it's going, to pro it's going to produce a magnetic field pointing this way. This inductor wants to maintain the flux that was originally in it. It had a zero flux because there was no current or anything flowing through it, so there's no magnetic fields at all. This inductor is going to have a magnetic field um, across it from this potential difference. It will induce a magnetic field, its own magnetic field, in the opposite direction to maintain that, that flux of zero. That will cause it to produce its own voltage, which will oppose the current and make it so that no current initially flows through this inductor. 
over time, this inductor will not be able to induce uh, as strong of a magnetic field, so this its own induced magnetic field will begin to uh, weaken, and eventually current will be allowed to flow through this inductor. So that is what that is what's initially going on, and that is why no current initially flows through an inductor. So if we looked at, if we graphed the actual current, I versus T, the, the current versus time, right? Initially, your current is going to be zero, and so uh, over time, it will allow current to flow through it, and the current will max, it, it, after a given amount of time, enough time, uh, the current will taper off at its maximum current level, and that can be determined by Ohm's law, right? And so you would just use, this, this inductor would essentially uh, act like a wire. So after enough time, this inductor would be, it would act just like the wire you initially thought it was going to behave like, because it's going to build up this magnetic field, its induced magnetic field is going to disappear, and this, this inductor will act just like a wire in, in a DC circuit. So the current, uh, the current through this inductor will, will be zero initially, it will increase um, exponentially, and it will taper off to a maximum value. Uh, let me show you guys the actual voltage across this inductor. Initially, the uh, so if we have this, if we plot voltage versus time, the voltage would be maximum, right? And over time, that voltage would, would decrease. So initially, you have a maximum voltage across that inductor. That's that voltage that we applied here. Uh, but there's still no current initially. So initially, there's no current. There's a loss of voltage. And then over time, that current starts to increase, and the, the voltage across that inductor will start to decrease to eventually zero, right? Assuming this inductor had no resistance in the wire, and so that, that, or yeah, the inductor had no resistance in that little wire coil that it was made of, and so that inductor will behave just like a wire in a DC circuit after this, after this time period has, has happened. And this is a very, generally a very fast uh, transition. This all happens in a very short period of time. So generally we would say that this, that if I drew this, equi an equivalent circuit for this, let me go ahead and draw that. So if we drew an equivalent circuit, if this was our battery, and we drew uh, an inductor, right? Kind of looks like a resistor, but that is an inductor, L. That's the symbol for an inductor. It would be equivalent. It would be equivalent to a circuit that looks, looks something like this. There would be essentially uh, nothing there. That is what an inductor looks like in a DC circuit because really initially it's going gonna, it's gonna to act like an open circuit, right? It's, there's going to be no uh, current flowing through it, so it'll just act like a break in the wire initially. But after a very short period of time, that inductor will allow current to pass through it and it'll actually act just like a wire. So it'd be as if that inductor was not even there in that DC circuit. Also, guys, one very important concept that I almost forgot to explain was... Um, what happens when this switch is open? Because it's it's very important. Uh, we actually have to look at what happens when this switch is opened. Unlike in a capacitor circuit, uh, something very interesting happens when this switch is actually open. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, let's go back to the very fundamentals. I want to just blow up this coil and show you guys it in a bigger picture, right? And so we have some voltage which we've applied uh, across this inductor, right? There's, there is some potential difference across this inductor to have current flowing through it. Again, this is after the switch has been closed for a while, so this, this inductor is now acting like a wire. And basically, this inductor, uh, it, it has some, some induced magnetic field, right? Again, that can be determined by the right-hand rule. And, uh, or not some, it has, it has a magnetic field created by the current. And its induced magnetic field has already faded away, it's disappeared, and it's allowing current to flow through it at this point. Again, the switch has been closed for a significant period of time to the point where this inductor is allowing current to flow through it. And so what is... Um, important to understand is like I said these these inductors really want to maintain their flux initially that had that when there when the switch was initially open there was no uh, current flowing through this inductor there was no flux or anything right there was, the flux we could say was zero and so we close this switch and all of a sudden there's a magnetic field pointing to the left this inductor is going to want to point one to the right to cancel that out and maintain that flux of zero well, we can see, again, eventually in the end it loses and it can't maintain that flux, so uh, a current will begin to flow through it and it will have an overall um, magnetic field pointing 
to the left here, just like this. And so this is the state that the inductor would be in for after a long period of time after current has been flowing through this inductor. When we open up this switch, the overall flux, there is a flux pointing overall to the left, right? So there is a flux in this, and this inductor is gonna want to, to maintain that flux. And so what happens is this was the this was the original this was the actual potential difference across this inductor uh, while it was conducting current. Once we actually remove once we open up this switch now relative to what it was before uh, this side of the inductor will become more negative right and this side will become more positive because before it was negative now it's uh, before this side was positive now it's going to become more negative before this side was negative, now it's going to become more positive because that switch is opening up and there's now no more potential difference across this inductor, right? And so that's actually going to cause, uh, really, we could think of it, it's going to, due to the, the right-hand rule, if you uh, pointed your finger in the direction of the, of the current, right, so the direction of the current is, is this way, and the magnetic field is going to point this way. So this is going to be the actual magnetic field due to the change in current. And so the inductor is going to induce its own magnetic field because it's going to want to maintain that 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 a magnetic field that it had in there before. It had a magnetic field pointing to the left. So it's going to induce even more magnetic fields uh, and pointing them to the left to try and maintain that because um, because of that current change. So it's kind of the opposite of what was originally happening. And so this inductor is going to want to uh, make its own voltage to maintain that current. So if we looked at it, this circuit before had a positive voltage here, and so this was positive and this was negative, right? When the switch was closed, this side of the inductor was more positive, this side was more negative. Now when this switch is open, and there, there was a current, right? There was a current flowing this way. This is conventional current flow, so this was our current I. So there was a current flowing through this inductor when that switch was closed for a while. As soon as we release this switch... Uh, this inductor is going to induce a voltage uh, which will create it. It's going to want to keep that current. It's going to want this current to maintain. The inductor itself is really uh, opposing current changes in any direction. It doesn't want current to start flowing through it, and it doesn't want current to stop flowing through it once it has started flowing through it. So the inductor will oppose these changes in any direction, and so it's going to want to keep this current flowing through this inductor, right? And so what's going to happen really is uh, it's going to create a positive voltage on this side and a negative voltage on this side. And this is going to be a very high voltage. It'll create voltages far higher than what this original uh, voltage uh, across this battery was. So it'll create very high voltages and it'll try to uh, keep a current flowing. And in, some, in most cases, it'll actually create a voltage so high that it'll actually... Um, be higher than the actual breakdown voltage of the air and it will create a spark which will jump across these switches or and stuff like that so you got to be very careful in, in electronics design if you're ever doing like switching with inductors it can actually create high voltage transients which can uh, damage transistors and other solid state components but yes it will try to create a voltage as high as it possibly can to maintain uh, that current so basically what you have is you have this magnetic field which is around this inductor in both directions and this magnetic field is actually collapsing in so when you first uh, charged up the inductor originally when you when you close this switch you had magnetic fields building up around the inductor right and then so when we open up this switch it's going to produce its own uh, EMF or it's going to produce some voltage across this inductor and try and maintain this current and it's going to use its magnetic fields that it built up and it's going to trade those off. Those magnetic fields are going to collapse and it's going to try and turn those back into electrical energy. So that's what the inductor does when the switch is open. Alright guys, so I just want to show you guys the actual circuit I set up here to demonstrate this. So I have a 12 volt power supply. It's not a battery but a power supply. Same thing. Here is a 100 ohm resistor. So there's a 100 ohm resistor in series with this circuit. And then here's our inductor. And then here's the switch. So there's there's the switch that I'm going to open and close. I'm actually just going to use a wire, not a switch, but it's the same thing. And then basically, so the first channel of our oscilloscope is actually going to measure the voltage across this inductor. So this will show us the actual uh, voltage across the inductor. And then the second channel of the oscilloscope is going to measure the voltage across this resistor. And this is actually going to represent the current flowing in the circuit, right? If current, if there is no current flowing in this circuit, there will be no potential difference across this resistor. If there is current flowing through this circuit, there will be a potential difference across this, resi this resistor, and we can actually measure the amount of current flowing through this uh, circuit by using Ohm's law. So 
I is equal to V over R. If we took this voltage that we got out of channel 2, divide it by the 100 ohm resistor, that would tell us the actual current flowing through the circuit. We don't really need to know the exact current flowing through the circuit, I just want to demonstrate this, but just know that channel 2's voltage is directly proportional to the current flowing through the circuit. So we could think of channel 2 as actually representing the current flowing in the circuit. So here's our power supply at 12 volts. There's a lot going on here, and here's our little 100 ohm resistor. We have uh, both of the oscilloscopes hooked up, or both of the channels of the oscilloscope hooked up here. And then um, I'm just using this as a switch, kind of just touching it. And this is the power coming from the power supply, and there is our inductor. So there's, it's quite a busy setup here, but uh, let's let me show you the actual data we captured from this. All right, guys. So here's the actual data that we captured. Let me turn some of those display features off because it's getting a little busy. Alright, so here's what's going on. This right here is the very instant that that switch was closed. And as you can see, the voltage across that inductor is maximum. It's almost 12 volts. It is 12 volts, that supply voltage, right? But the current at that point is still zero. There's no current flowing. So that inductor is resisting that current flow. Over a short period of time, that inductor uh, will begin to allow current to flow through it, right? Those as those magnetic fields build up to their maximum value, that inductor will start to allow current to flow through it, and the potential difference for the voltage across that inductor will, will start to decrease, and it will become zero. And at this point, the inductor is pretty much just like a, a closed switch, or it's acting like a wire in this DC circuit. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. As always, guys, have a good one.